this is a tissue drying cycle, and I throw this in here because I find it pretty fascinating that uh, this is a pretty good application where uh, you wouldn't think of freeze drying, but uh, there is a lot of freeze drying done for uh, body parts, for uh, anything that has to do with tissues, and it could be collagen, et cetera. Um, a good cycle for, for tissue is 2 degrees C per minute and go down to minus 50. Why minus 50? Well, there is salt uh, in, in uh, tissues, and you want to make sure that everything is frozen. Uh, to make this cycle more robust, an annealing step can be added to go to minus 20, maybe for an hour if it's a thin material, or three hours if it's a thicker material. And that's refrozen to minus 50. And the primary drying cycle, um, it could be put yourself to minus 5. Now, it's been determined that uh, bovine pericardium has a melting temperature of about a minus 11.6. It has a TG prime, a glass transition temperature of minus 81. But we can't use, but we don't have to use the, the glass transition temperature for our process control because the tissue actually has a structure associated with it. And it's not going to collapse on itself, but there is a melting point, and that's the critical temperature is minus 11.6. We have to maintain our product below minus 11.6 to have a robust cycle. So a shelf temperature of minus 5 with a chamber pressure of 160 uh, is going to be a very robust cycle. This, this paper, by, uh, just for reference, is written by Borg, Borgnoni, and it's called The Influence of Freezing Rates on Bovine Pericardium. Uh, in secondary drying, uh, they went up to 25 degrees C and kept the same, uh, same uh, vacuum level. Um, in Europe, a lot of times they'll reduce the vacuum level to zero. Uh, I don't necessarily think that that's a good thing because you're actually putting a variation in the cycle. You should be consistent about whatever you do. And in this case, we're holding the vacuum at the same level. Some people put mixed batches or in, in their uh, freeze dryer. Uh, be aware that you can only dry as fast as the slowest product. So whatever the thickest is, whatever the biggest is, whatever the, the longest drying process is, everything needs to dry, dry at that rate. So you have to always develop your cycles for the, the worst case conditions, not the best case conditions, and use the lowest product critical temperatures if you're doing this. A lot of times there'll be bone or tissue or slurry in a system uh, or collagen or some other materials. Um, I mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. Can a product be, can a product be too dry? There is the possibility of product being too dry. A lot of pro some proteins have that problem. It's important to understand what is the proper residual moisture content. Common process problems. Pre-freezing products in a freezer and moving to a freeze dryer. If you throw your product in a freezer, in a, in a bag, in a tray, in whatever, and sometimes the tray touches the bottom of the freezer, sometimes it touches the shelf of the freezer, sometimes it's stacked on something else. You are going to get multiple different, you're going to get different freezing rates for the product, and that's going to lead to an inconsistently frozen product, and therefore the ice crystal structures in, is not consistent. We've already discussed that's a problem. Uh, another problem that might be that the freezer might not be cold enough. You might be putting it into a minus 15 degree C freezer instead of a minus 80 degree freezer. That may not be freezing the product, especially if you have something like a solvent in there or sodium fluoride in there, um, or any and, or a lot of other sugars. By the way, it just doesn't have to be those materials. So, if you're doing that, this can this can lead to melting in uh, in the freeze drying process or inconsistencies in your freeze drying process. You could also experience melting uh, when you're transferring it to the freeze dryer. If you're freezing outside of the freeze dryer, we recommend to anneal in the, fr in the freezing step. Now, it's also a problem if you're trying to load that product into a cold freeze dryer. If you, if you have a cold shelf in the freeze dryer and you open up the door to put your product onto a cold shelf, let's say a minus 40 degree shelf, you are going to get moisture on the shelf that's going to be frost. When you first start the system up and you pull a vacuum, that frost is going to flash sublimate. Instead of having what the system's designed for maybe one liter per hour of uh, condensate, 
you might be pushing off five liters per hour and it could overload the condenser. It's critical to understand that that is, could be a problem. So we try to, to stay away from loading on a very cold shelf. Maximum low temperature might be zero degrees on a shelf just to minimize the, the amount of frost that is created. There's also the, the case where a product does not touch the shelf. If you're freeze drying in bags or you're freeze drying in medical devices, you might have some product touching the shelf, some product not, not touching the shelf, or no, none of the product touches the shelf. What we recommend in those cases is if some of the product never touches the shelf, then none of the product should touch, touch the shelf. So you have consistent heat transfer across your batch. All right, so it's very important to understand that everything should freeze at the same rate and everything should dry at the same rate. Also, if you're using bags, it's important to understand that the vapor pressure inside the bag during sublimation is going to be higher than the chamber pressure. So you have a barrier to sublimation going on there. And if you have a very aggressive sublimation rate, the pressure could be high enough inside the bag to actually cause a collapse condition or a meltback condition of the product that's in the bag. So you need to do your test uh, to show that you're not melting that back. Here's an example of what's recommended if you're processing in bags. A simple rack like this would do. Uh, it, it basically would put all of the bags in the same condition so they're getting the same heat transfer. Some final thoughts. Freeze drying is a robust process. And when the, the, the steps are performed properly, meaning they're controlled in every, in every aspect, the results are consistent and repeatable. All right, so that's critical. If you're having variation in, your, in, your, the out, um, in the quality of the product that's coming out of the freeze dryer, something in the process is not consistent. Make sure that each step has process control to eliminate variation. Uh, if you're doing tissues, uh, you can be a little bit more, tissues or collagens, you can be a little more uh, aggressive because you actually have a structure or what's called a matrix that supports the material. So, so collapse isn't really the problem, it's the melt back portion of things that's the problem. All right, though, that's all I have to, to talk about today. I'm hoping that this was useful for you. Uh, and certainly if you have any questions, please give us a call.